when I think about our field as a whole, I, I keep coming back to, I don't think the pain is great enough yet, which maybe sounds bananas given that here we are, we just at the top of the podcast, we're saying like, oh my God, we're so tired and this pandemic and slow burn and all this kind of stuff. But um, it's painful, but in some ways, like maybe not painful enough yet. Like maybe everybody's not like we had the shuttered venues operator grants. We had the PPE loans, you know, these things that were necessary and helped buoy us as an industry, but barely kept us, you know, moving along. But maybe ticket sales haven't declined enough yet. Maybe enough baby boomers are, 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 they're still giving. And so we are not feeling that pain just yet enough. I, I think I think that, and I'm not wishing for more pain for our industry, believe me, but yeah. I just, um, when you're talking about like not knowing the problem, like that's a real impetus for change. I always say the silver lining of a crisis is that it, when you hit rock bottom, you know, you got to do it differently. And so, and I see that sometimes in the clients I work with of like, no, we know, we know, Aubrey, we're there. And so as a whole industry, maybe the pain isn't just quite great enough yet. I, I don't know. I there's actually have you heard of the it's not I'm not sure if it's a maxim or a parable but it's like mm-hmm. a saying where there's only one way you can boil a frog but there are two ways you can do it right you can boil the water and then put the frog in and it jumps mm. right back out yeah 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 or you can just put it in regular like room temperature water and just turn the heat up mm. we'd we'd like to apologize to all our frog listeners out there like we do not <laughs> We do not advocate the the boiling the legs, frogs. No, bro, come on. For the, for the record, <laughs> them legs though. You saw, you saw them legs. <laughs> right. I know you think that's the, the problem, and I agree. Because actually, one of my questions was is like, what amount of pain do you think would be required for institutions to rethink their strategy? Is no shows like nobody coming to a show going to be the the realization? Because uh, honestly. Like it feels like the water's starting to boil because when you look at the audiences of these orchestras that exist in inner cities where people look like me, but the audiences is just a sea of silver, silver hair. Like, I don't know what it's going to take. Do you have any insight? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, two things are coming to mind. One, in this goal to try to be more positive. Like I, there are some organizations, like I said, say, yes, this is different. And even um, the recruiter calls I've gotten recently for some of the open CEO roles, like I'm seeing a difference in the job descriptions than I saw five years ago, four years ago. Mm. So some of this may be performative. Okay. Let's just name it. But it's still a step and it's still different language than I was seeing. And these job descriptions are not as cookie cutter. And so I'm like, well, when we're talking about a massive board, many of which are this older generation, very set in their ways, like that does give me some hope. It's progress, not perfection. It's baby steps. But like, I, I see it happening in real time. Okay. And like I said, someday that match is going to come and I'm like, put me in. So, okay. That's one thing. Now, not as positive. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now we're talking. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, so I go back to, I say a lot, and I have been over the pandemic, like what were the trends pre-pandemic? Declining ticket sales. We know from the League of American Orchestras, ticket sales were on the decline 2.8% a year. National average for orchestras across the country. And so we know what that graph looks like. That's a downward graph. Okay, so many people have said the pandemic is an accelerant of all kinds of trends. Whatever the trend was before, positive, negative, whatever, the pandemic has accelerated that. So I did this exercise earlier in the pandemic, almost a year ago now, um, where I thought, well, what if what if the pandemic accelerated that ticket sales graph by 10 years? We don't know, is it going to accelerate things by 10 years, five years, 12 years? You know, we don't know. But as an exercise, what does that look like? If we do that, meaning that when we come back, sort of now as orchestras and other classical music ensembles are coming back, that would look like a 42% decrease in our audiences. That's almost half. So, and again, this is just a thought exercise. You know, we don't know, but but 
to your point, you know, even coming back now, some of these performances have been very full because there's a spike in demand. People want to come back to live performance. We know, I mean, that's a, that's good for us. We know people want live music in their lives. So great. It goes back to product service. Like that's helpful. But I've also seen performances that, yeah, I would say it probably looks half full, maybe 60% sold. I don't know. And I'm like, that's a problem. So one more, one more uh, data point I want to share on this. Just earlier this week, I was reading this report released by the National Center for Arts Research and Data Arts that's out of SMU, and they released a fantastic model of ticket sales projections. So on the same topic I'm just speaking of, they their model was ticket sales projections based on all kinds of factors. The model included vaccine rates, um, pricing and sort of other meta factors such as like they used restaurant employment uh, as an indicator of people wanting to go out for example hmm. so anyways very smart fantastic model of all of these different data points and, and as you tinker with these different variables what does that do for the projections of ticket sales in our audiences so Oh, and then they combine that with historical actual sales data from 50 plus organizations ranging in budget from a million dollars to, I think, 167 million. So anyways, massive, um, really reliable data set. OK, all of that laying the groundwork. This model showed that in the quote unquote realistic best case scenario. So they're again, best case scenario within reason, then giving uh they said that means a national vaccination rate of 67% by the end of 2021 and a drop in COVID cases. Okay, asterisk, because we know there's not a drop in COVID cases right now. But they said if that were to happen, ticket sales, by the start of 2022, ticket sales would reach 65% of their pre-pandemic levels. Oh, that is oh, oh what? Yeah. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this goes to... <laughs> Like, how will we know that the pain is great enough? Like, maybe we're not there. Like, it's going to happen in January. It's going to happen this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Like, if not this fiscal year, then maybe next fiscal year, if, mm -hmm. if organizations do not take steps to change. And like I said, more and more are saying, yeah, we know we've got to combat these trends. So anyways, two different things. If we, if we don't change it, that's the trend. That's what a fantastic model is telling us right now. And not that that's the end all be all, but yeah. they're pretty smart people there at SMU. So I, I dig it. Um, all of these trends though, I believe can be reversed. I've seen it. I've lived it. We've done it. I've, I've been a part of an organization that doubled their audience, average age dropped, quadru nearly quadrupled the donor base. Like I believe all of this growth is possible. So I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I want to mm -hmm. outline the scenario if we don't change. 